So I thought I was ready to do this and part of me is like nervous like I'm so nervous to do this and I feel like is there a right way to explain this and is there a wrong way to explain it I've had a lisp disorder since I could remember it was something that stayed with me and it was a lot worse back then but um, I did a lot of practicing and a ton of speech classes like a ton <laughs> It's almost like I exaggerate my S's, like if I say, hey, stop, or can you please come to me? It's like the S is behind my head and I'm always thinking too much before I talk. And I feel like I have to pronounce it right. And then I'm thinking too much and then it comes out all wrong and I'm freaking out now. <laughs> my brain is like this machine and before I talk to anybody, if I meet a new person or if I meet a new friend, I'm always like on guard and I'm like, okay, I'm about to talk to this person. Before you talk, be aware of your S's, <laughs> literally. Once I thought what I was gonna say to that person, I start to talk. And then while I'm talking, I start to realize that I'm slithering and I sound like I'm spitting and then I start to panic. It is almost like I get social anxiety. My hands start to shake, I start to sweat, and I start to tell myself how stupid I am. I start to get really mad at myself for even talking in the first place. I think that's one of the main reasons I didn't grow up with a lot of friends and I always looked for my twin sister and she kind of always got the friends and not me, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with um, her. I'm not blaming it on her, but I was always afraid to get made fun of. The first time I realized how serious my speech problem was, and I know I should not call it a problem, but I really hate calling it a disorder, <laughs> was Around my first grade year, um, I was pulled out of class and I was taken to a class with a random lady that called herself a speech teacher. <laughs> That's what I can recall back then. She sat me down and I was very little. I was even learning how to even talk properly or pronounce things properly. She sat me down in a table and she put a mirror in front of my face, like something like this, and she made me say every word that had to do with S's. And she would make me say it in front of the mirror and she would make me look at my mouth. So I would. And then I realized that my mouth was going one direction and my mouth wasn't moving forward. Like everything that I said, it just didn't. I remember, <laughs> I remember thinking, is that why everyone makes fun of me? But I'm young, you didn't really think about it too much at that time. Teachers kind of were thinking more like you're developing yourself or you're not finishing, like you're still learning how to pronounce it, if that makes sense. I caught jokes so late. So when somebody will laugh at me, I kind of will laugh with them because I was not understanding what they were making fun of. And then when I realized they were making fun at me, it completely broke me down and I grew a lot of hate. Speech teachers, teachers, friends were reminding me how ugly I sounded and it really hurt a lot. I have so many people that tell me why I talk the way I talk. Example, my first grade teacher told me that it was because of my life. When I was younger, my father had just left. My mother was a single mother and we were all very, very traumatized. There was a lot of abuse and stress. I was always filled with fear and I didn't know how to communicate with new people. But the older I got, the more people were like, it's just me or I don't practice enough. I've heard it all. I don't think I ever got better at my speech problem because I was always so mad at myself. And the moment I sat down and I practiced, I realized how much I sucked. So then I hated myself and I no longer practiced. And that is my fault. One thing that I really hate the most is when somebody says 
all you have to do is practice. And because so many people tell me that, I want to sit here and I want people to be aware that it's not as easy as to tell someone to practice or fix themselves. I've been through speech classes in school, but I also was in speech lessons on my own time because I was that insecure of myself. I had a $25 allowance every week when I was younger and those $25 would go to a speech teacher every Saturday. And he would sit me down and he would make me pronounce stuff like this that I will show you guys. So they kind of look like this and they're kind of old. They're really old. I have a speech folder where I would sit in front of my mirror and I would practice my own time. There was a moment where I would actually have my own sister try to help me, but I felt like I was frustrating everyone around me that I stopped. He would make me pronounce stuff like, and this is the worst one, and in this one, the first time I said it, I bawled out crying. A noise, a noise, an oyster, but a noisy noise, a noise, an oyster more. And he made me record this and I remember one night I sat in my room and I was replaying it back and at that moment I realized how ashamed I was. That is so embarrassing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I sound like that? Like, wow, like no wonder people pick on me. <laughs> and then I saved up $250 for a program. It was called Kill Your Lisp, Overcome Lisp Speech Disorder. Now this was a really expensive program. Now the first introduction got me. It says, the first sentence was, are you overwhelmed with fear and embarrassment when you speak loudly? And that's what got me to buy this. I could have all the programs out there in the world and it wasn't enough. I was too embarrassed and my confidence level was on a zero. Like, I had no confidence to even try. I know people always tell me, don't be so hard on yourself when it comes to the way I talk because there's nothing wrong with it. But now imagine this generation and people. People can be really mean and a lot of people don't ever think before they talk. I don't think this generation and no generation was ever aware of a speech disorder and how serious it really is. It's almost like feeling ugly about yourself or having issues of your body weight or body image and it almost felt like it was something you couldn't fix but you wanted to. And because it's something that's not always talked about and not ever put out there, people don't realize how hurtful it really is. I have been bullied all my life and now I put myself out there in social media and I get negative comments all the time. When my photo went kind of like a mini viral and it went everywhere on Twitter and on Facebook, it gave me an open eye. When I checked on Facebook comments, they were so rude that it actually left me in shock. I started to shake really bad and I got so mad because even guys were telling me that I was ugly. Like girls were saying I've seen prettier and believe me, I've seen prettier too than myself. <laughs> I see it every day. Girls were saying I could look like that if I had that much makeup. Like it was just really rude. But then I realized I have been through a lot worse than reading a comment that somebody doesn't even know me. In social media, people will write what they feel or what they think they know. Or because they're mad about something or they're having a bad day, so they let it out on somebody else. But let's take away social media. Social media you can get over with. I can read a bad comment and be frustrated for that second and then go back to my normal life and have to put up with my own life. Like real life issues. and. At that moment, I realized that those comments were very little to me because I have been through a lot worse. And by worse, I mean everything you can think of in your head. Everything a child should have never gone through. And most of all, worse because I have been bullied in my face. Like people had no shame to say what they said to me. One of my most traumatizing 
experiences with getting bullied by this was one day I was in English class and there was this guy who sat behind me. It was early morning, I go in there, I sit down, and this guy goes to me, Hey Lupe, do you know the movie Ice Age? And I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> he goes, you reminded me of the sloth because of the way you talk. I remember biting my teeth so hard not to cry because I was afraid to show my feelings. And he started to laugh and his friend said, what did you say? And he told him what he told me and he started to laugh. So the guy starts to pick on me and he starts to ask me, can I say something with an S? And I'm like, no, like stop. He started to laugh again. It started to become like this little joke to them that he would be like, hey sloth. <laughs> it was things like that that reminded me why I hated myself and why I never made any friends and why I was so scared to even talk. I had a love for acting and I do. It's hard to love acting when you talk the way you talk. I have been through many acting classes and they always say the same thing, pronounce, pronounce. And I couldn't, no matter how much I tried, I couldn't. But I knew in my heart, I loved it. Like I knew I could express myself. I faced my fears and I did acting and did monologues in front of a lot of people even though I knew I couldn't talk right. One day, I had the Shakespeare monologue. I mean, and this Shakespeare monologue was a very deep monologue. It really showed a lot of emotion. It was like, you day shall pass him by, then I don't know, you were like, I was down to my knees, I was putting my hands up, I was serious. I slept on this monologue, I would wake up on it and is all I thought about. It was time to perform it in front of everyone in my theater class in high school, my sophomore year. And my teacher had this thing where you had to accept getting a critique from someone. I remember my first critique was her because she said she wanted to talk. She was very disappointed even though when I was done with that monologue, I really thought I did good. And she looked at me and she was like, I got nothing that she said. It was almost like you sounded like an alien from another planet. I didn't understand anything you said. You could see the whole class jaws open. At that moment, I felt like everyone was feeling really bad for me that I was getting really good critiques and the people that knew me were telling me that I did really good and I remember biting my teeth and feeling like all I wanted to do was run because I was so embarrassed. And the worst of it was not being able to do anything about it. Like just standing in the front of the whole class and be so embarrassed. I remember at that time I was having issues in high school and there was a lot of bullying and there was just a lot of people making fun of the way me and my sister dressed and they made fun of us a lot. I finally confessed to my mother that I wanna get homeschooled and we're having issues in high school and we don't wanna go back. And I remember sitting in the car and my sister starts to cry really bad. And my mom felt really bad. I remember sitting there like, I'm ready. I'm ready to get out of high school because my teacher and the whole class kinda assured it to me that I'm done. Friends were really rude to me. They would, I remember I had this friend, friend. <laughs> and she just realized that I had a lisp and it fascinated her. It fascinated her so much that she grabbed me and dragged me everywhere to say something with an S. When I said something, she would laugh so hard, like it was, it entertained her. And even though I kept saying stop and I'm biting my teeth, almost tears coming out, she kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. I had people tell me, why don't you talk like that? They would laugh at my face and they would say I sound ugly. It was just too much for me and leaving high school was probably the best thing I ever did. I didn't care to go back. I didn't care to give anybody credit because there's only one friend who stuck around with me and I will forever have him in my heart. But when everyone knew why we left, nobody ever came back to even try to even talk. I gave up. When I first started doing this video, I freaked out. I got really nervous and I didn't know how to even start it. I was so ready for it and I'm like, I know what I wanna say, I got this. And then the moment you sit down and you wanna just say it right, you want people to get an idea 
of how hurtful you can be and to watch what you say before you end up making fun of somebody else. When somebody else out there ever stutters or has a speech problem, please think before you talk because probably one of the most horrible things anybody has to deal with. The anxiety and embarrassment takes over your entire life and it makes you be afraid of everything out there. It took me a lot of guts to even sit here and say this. One of my major goals in life is to inspire people and I've always felt like I've been through a lot for a reason and it's to sit here or somewhere one day to tell my story and make people believe that they can do it because I did it. Every time I went through a trauma in my life, I would sit back and I would cry and I would feel like my world is going to end but I would tell myself it's another story to make someone else believe and that is why I don't give up. And to everyone out there who supports me every day, there was a point in my life where I didn't even know where I was going because I lost the confidence of ever fulfilling my dreams and becoming an actress, being able to sit and do videos. <laughs> and when I sit here and I read your comments, it gives me so much hope. And I can't thank you guys enough for all your nice comments and for supporting me and believing in me. I hope you guys learned something and it'll make you have a soft spot for people who struggle the way they talk or body image or anything like we all suffer and we all have flaws but thank you guys so much for watching this video I really hope you guys enjoy it please comment below if you guys actually liked it and you guys want to see more videos like this Please put a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, Instagram me, and totally tweet me and tell me what you think, and add me on Snapchat. I hope you all have an awesome day. Bye!